Whitney, Mom rang me up. She's all flustered about you bolting out of the house, leaving a mess behind. The sink's a mountain of dirty dishes, she says. Yeah, I was in a mad dash this morning. Didn't have a moment to spare. This is so typical of you, Whitney. Aren't older siblings supposed to set an example? You're the one who's supposed to keep the house in order, remember? Jeez, you're sounding more and more like mom with all this nagging. You think I'm lecturing you because I want to play mom? I'm just giving you a heads up that you're slacking off. Hold on a minute. Isn't it odd that I'm the only one doing all the housework? We share the same roof, don't we? Instead of gripping about it, why don't you let a hand? You already know the answer to that. Mom said I don't have to help you. Yes, I'm aware she said that. But don't you find it peculiar that I'm the only one doing all the work? And Mom says you're exempted? Well, well. So you did know. But let me tell you something. You're the only one who finds it odd. Everyone else gets it. And do you know why? What do you mean everyone else gets it? What am I missing here? Oh, Whitney. Are you really that oblivious about your own nature? What are you implying? You're the type who can't help but be of service to others and me. I'm someone who wouldn't dream of causing trouble for anyone else. Do you see where I'm going with this? We're simply not on the same level. That's absurd. You can't possibly believe that. But I do. If I was wrong, someone would have corrected me by now. It's clear as day. Mom, Dad, and I are superior to you in every way. We call the shots, and you follow the orders. It's as simple as that. If you're unhappy about it, blame your own laziness. Lazy? I've been putting up with this unfair treatment since middle school. Ever wondered why it started then? It's because your grades didn't meet mom and dad's expectations. You reap what you sow, Whitney. Still, it doesn't make sense that I'm singled out like this. I've never been given a fair shot. There you go again with your, this is strange and that is strange. You sound like a broken record. You want a chance to prove yourself when there's clearly no point. Mom and dad gain nothing from it. And frankly, you're not in a position to demand anything. They could at least let me move out if they don't like how I do things around here. But no! They want me to pay them rent and do all the housework. It's as if they've decided that I'm their personal maid for life. A maid? That's hilarious. I bet that's exactly how they see you. Makes sense, doesn't it? At least you're good at cleaning. <laughs> I find it incredibly disturbing that you don't see anything wrong with that. Kristen, please. At the very least, try to understand where I'm coming from here. Stephen agrees that there is something really weird about the way you guys treat me. Stephen is just a big softie. Of course he's going to show you sympathy. Speaking of Stephen, you know how I graduated from an Ivy League school this year? He's already slated to join a multi-million dollar tech company. You know how hard he had to work to get where he is? Oh, right. Of course you don't. You were too busy ditching school to know what hard work is. And that's exactly why a good-for-nothing like you is being put to use in exactly the place you should be doing housework and cleaning. <laughs> Just lay off already! This conversation is going nowhere! So, I'm out! That's so funny. You actually thought something would change because we had a little chat? Is that really what you were expecting? Poor widow baby. <laughs> well, you just have to work really hard at what you're already doing. You don't really have any other talents worth mentioning, so it would probably be best not to go against what we tell you anymore. Just saying. The only thing that will come of it is you losing any argument you try to make anyway, so don't even bother. Hey, Whitney, don't worry about everything over here. So just take it easy, okay? I think you're getting some weird messages or something over there, but just ignore them. 
Sorry, Stephen. I feel like I'm always weighing you down. Nah, don't worry about it. I've already gotten everything done that needs to for my graduation credits. I'm pretty much on week 6 of living at home with no job, so I've got a lot of free time. <laughs> yeah, but once you finally do join the workforce, it'll be an uphill battle from then on. You should enjoy your freedom while you still can do everything you want to do before you're bogged down by work. Just ignore me and my silly problems. Like I said, I've got a lot of free time. And I've been telling you from the very start that there's something very wrong with how the rest of the family is treating you. What with all three of them barking orders at you all the time? It's beyond ridiculous. Still, Kristen is your big sister too. Let's clear one thing up. You're my big sister. And that's how I see you. But Kristen is a selfish brat. As far as I'm concerned, she's no sister of mine. Even though she's selfish, she's still your sister. You shouldn't talk about her like that. Jeez, you know, this is exactly why they take advantage of you, right? You're too nice. Regardless, to be perfectly honest with you, I think your job is absolutely amazing. There's no way in hell I could do what you do. Thanks, Stephen. It makes me happy to hear someone say that. Anyway, I'll be coming back home tomorrow, so I'll see you then. Got it. Also, don't worry about us back home. Just turn off your notifications for the three other numbskulls. Otherwise, you're going to exhaust yourself trying to look after all of us. <laughs> Thanks for caring. You really are something, aren't you? Guess you can't expect lower class folk to be capable of anything but lower class thinking. Though I guess you could say you've completely met all my expectations. What is your problem all of a sudden? I'm kind of in the middle of work. So if you have some rotten thing to say to me, can you save it for later? In the middle of work? As if there's anything difficult or even respectable about your job for that matter. Anyway, someone from your work is here. What exactly is this all about? Someone from my work? Who is it? Seriously? You don't even have any idea who it is? Listen, you're really starting to get on my nerves. If you've got something to say, just spit it out already. Oh, come on. You're taking this out on me. Some girl here is saying you're the hussy who stole her fiancé. I shouldn't be the one who has to deal with her. Any way you look at it, this is your responsibility. What on earth are you trying to pull? This is absolutely ridiculous. And now you're playing dumb? But whatever, I'll bite. She told me she's a secretary at the place you work at. She even gave me a business card, so I know she's legit. So do I really need to say this again? She's claiming you're the homewrecker who stole her fiancé. Okay, I don't know how many times I have to say this, but I seriously have no idea what you're talking about. I got it, I got it. I can see how you wouldn't want to admit something so low and heinous. After all, it would pretty much be the end of your little job, wouldn't it? There's really no way to refute this, though. She showed up with a ton of photo evidence. Super incriminating. <laughs> it's really about time you drop the act, don't you think? No matter how much you feign ignorance, this is cold, hard proof. This is so shocking, even for you. Not only are you a garbage lower class simpleton, you're also a homewrecker. You are so, so done for. <laughs> All right, now I know I have to look into this. I really need to know what this is all about. Oh, come on. Why would you doubt me no matter what I say? You can go ahead and deny it to your heart's content if it makes you feel better. <laughs> Stephen, are you home? Chris has been spouting some wild tales. About the alleged affair? Yes, that's the one. I need you to tell me who showed up at her house and what on earth is happening. Before we dive into that, you really should apologize. The evidence Christine presented is overwhelming. It's hard to believe, but it's undeniable. Stephen, 
You've got to trust me. This must be some sort of mix-up. I have no recollection of any such thing. Regardless of your perspective or your defense, the evidence is compelling. I truly believe you owe an apology. So, you're buying into this too? Shouldn't you hear my side of the story before making assumptions? You must understand the gravity of this situation. An affair, particularly with someone's fiancé and at your workplace, has serious repercussions. You think I'm not aware of that? Then why on earth would you do something so reckless? Do you think I wanted to believe this? But this woman showed up, tears streaming down her face, accusing you. I honestly have no clue who she is. This is preposterous. If that's true, then who was that woman? She was so inconsolable. Are you suggesting this is all an elaborate hoax? How could you? Stephen, I thought if anyone would believe me, it would be you. As I said earlier, despite the mess you've created, I'm willing to hear your side of the story after an apology. I'm having this investigated at my workplace right now, but I'm shocked that even you don't trust me. Stephen, I know I promised to stay with you until you were ready to live independently, until your job was secure. But I can stay in this house any longer. I'm moving out tomorrow. Wait a minute. Let's not make hasty decisions. I promise to listen to you. No, enough is enough. You know how much I wanted to support you until you graduated and moved out on your own, especially with mom, dad, and Kristen being who they are. But this is the final straw. I'm done. None of you has the right to constantly belittle me like this. Hold on. Even if you decide to move out, it doesn't have to be tomorrow, right? Look, I apologize for overreacting earlier. Can we just take a moment to calm down? All you had to do was say sorry. Don't fret about me. I'm not alone. I have my fiancé who trusts me unconditionally. I truly apologize. I should have heard you out before doubting you. I've been meaning to meet your fiancé anyway. So don't make such a drastic decision all of a sudden. Apologies, but it's already decided. Alright, but you're coming back today, right? No, I'm not. I'll be back tomorrow to collect my things. Make sure to inform the trio about it. Wait a minute. Whitney, pick up! Hey, homewrecker. Done packing. Steven filled me in. But aren't you forgetting something before you leave? Or are you just planning to walk out without a word of thanks? Why should I thank you? Ouch! Cold-hearted much? How about showing some gratitude to mom and dad for raising you? You're just going to leave without even saying goodbye? It's clear as day that you're trying to sneak out without us noticing. I'm not sneaking out. Stephen is home, and so is Mom. In fact, I want all of you to know that I'm leaving and never coming back. You can live your high-class life without me. Who do you think you are? You paid rent and did some chores, and now you think we can't survive without you? We can hire a maid with my salary. Then go ahead. If you can afford to pay all the work I did, then by all means, do it. You have no idea how much work it was. Of course I can afford it. Even though you're low class and lazy. Do you know what we call you behind your back? Low class criminal scum. That's catchy. <laughs> and for the record, I'm not a criminal. Well, infidelity isn't a crime per se. But stealing is. It's a slippery slope, Whitney. This time it was someone's lover. Who knows what it could be next time. Never knew you were such a shady character. Enough already! Well, it's probably for the best that you're leaving anyway. The more I think about it, the more I realize we don't need someone like you around here. Especially with all the rumors that are bound to start circulating about your little escapade. Yes, it's definitely best that we cut ties with you. Good riddance! To hell with all of you! 
You won't hear from me ever again. Oh, really? What a relief. <laughs> Goodbye, then. Hey, you there. Answer me. I saw you with Steven the other day. You've got some explaining to do. I beg your pardon? Have we met before? Who are you? It's rather rude to demand answers from a stranger without even introducing yourself. Quit playing innocent. I know you're up to something. Who is that man you were with? I've never seen him before. If you want answers, you need to calm down and tell me what you saw, where, and when. Without context, your questions are hard to answer. Does that make sense to you? Or are basic communication still a challenge for you? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yesterday at Bernicki's. You don't belong in a place like that. So spill it. Don't belong? You haven't changed a bit, Kristen. If you must know, that man is my husband. What? Your husband? You're joking, right? You're married? Seems like Stephen didn't tell you about that. I wanted to say until he graduated, but circumstances didn't allow it. You? Mom and Dad made sure of that. But it never occurred to you to wonder what Stephen might be doing after I left. Surely, you weren't completely oblivious. He didn't tell me anything about his plans or whereabouts. How was I supposed to know? Being the intelligent, high-class individual that you are, I'm sure you've figured it out by now. Figured out what? It should be obvious from everything you've said. The upscale restaurant... My husband and Stephen being there. Well, isn't it obvious? That's why I'm asking. How can your husband afford a private room at a place like Bernicki's? Oh, he's just the CEO of Joy Incorporated. Wait a minute. That sounds familiar. Isn't that the company Stephen was supposed to work at after graduation? Yes, although you've never given me credit for it. To be precise, it's the company where I work. No way! That's not the company that secretary lady who came crying to our door said she was from. Right, that lady. Turns out, she was talking my husband. She's not all there upstairs if you catch my drift. She made quite a scene with her fabricated stories of emotional turmoil. She was just a former co-worker of my husband's. They'd never been involved romantically. Her entire story was made up. Made up? But she had photographic evidence. It was all Photoshop and poorly done at that. Everyone at work saw through her lies immediately because of the shoddy editing job. So she concocted the whole thing and fooled me? Unbelievable. After I moved out and got married, she barged into the office and caused a major scene. It was the most outrageous meltdown I've ever witnessed. As far as I know, she was arrested afterwards. I haven't heard from her since. So all that crying, all those accusations of infidelity, it was all just an act? Essentially, yes. Anyway, there were no issues with my colleagues or superiors. Everyone supported me from the start, including my husband. And needless to say, Stephen is on my side now as well. So that's what you were discussing at that upscale restaurant? Well, partly Stephen and I actually reconciled a long time ago. We were discussing his job offer at my husband's company. Stephen declined it. Why would he do that? In short, once Stephen learned the truth about what happened, he felt so guilty that he didn't think he deserved to work at our company anymore. In fact, he felt guilty long before that. That's how he found me in the first place. What? This is all so confusing. I don't know what to believe anymore. After I left, Stephen felt terrible and tried his best to find me and apologize. With no other leads, he ended up going to her office. The real receptionist said he seemed so sincere when he explained the situation that she couldn't just ignore it. So she told him the truth about what happened and called me to tell me he was there. Of course, I went down to meet him right away. That's when he told me he couldn't accept the job. 
But Stephen hasn't told me any of this. Why wouldn't he share such important information? Clearly, he didn't think it was necessary to keep you in the loop. The only clear thing here is that he should have told me you were married to such a successful man. Why should that matter to you? Because mom and dad would be thrilled to meet him. You're going to introduce him to us, right? You've really made a name for yourself. Let's have lunch soon. I can't wait to meet him. Hmm, when should we meet? Well, regardless of our schedule, we'll accommodate yours. So when should we meet up? I'm sorry for interrupting your monologue, but why would I bring my husband to meet complete strangers? That doesn't make sense to me. Can you explain why I would do that? I don't understand why you're calling us strangers. We're your family. Maybe I just don't get your sense of humor. <laughs> oh dear, former little sister. How the tables have turned. What are you talking about? It seems we've come full circle. If you're sucking up to me now. Me? Low class maid? It seems your insensitive mockery has finally caught up with you. What was the old saying about karma? It seems to have slipped my mind. How on earth do you know about that? Oh, the loving parents who did everything in their power to sabotage my success? Ridiculing me at every turn? What was their fate again? Ah, yes, their precious daughter had a tantrum at work, assaulted her boss over some perceived slight. And of course, she had no savings to handle the resulting lawsuit. So, they had to bear the cost. But hey, at least you managed to settle out the court, right? Save some bucks on legal fees. How did you find out about that? You've been spying on us, haven't you? Please, don't flatter yourself. You know how fast gossip travels around here. I didn't want to know anything about you guys. But your drama became the town's favorite soap opera. Well, if you're aware of her situation, then you know we're in a financial mess. It's high time you repaid your debts to this family. Hmm, interesting point. How should I repay my so-called debts? Ah, I've got it. Hang in there. Hang in there? Yes, a word of encouragement. That should more than cover my debts to you at all. I never received a dime from you guys, not even a kind word. I paid for my own education and cleared all my student loans. I worked tirelessly throughout high school just to support myself. I don't remember ever receiving anything from you guys except for endless chores and exploitation. Or do you think I owe you for making me your personal maid? The only feeling I have towards you all is resentment. You can't be serious. Actually, if anyone owes anything, it's you. Our parents always favored you and treated you well. So maybe it's time for you to start paying them back. You've been spoiled all your life, so hang in there. Hold on. If that's true for me, then it's true for Steven too. He was pampered just like me. Ah, yes, Steven. He's always referred to you three as a constant annoyance. He's been on my side for as long as I can remember, except for one regrettable incident that he has shown plenty of remorse for. And let's not forget how terrible you all were to him too. Especially you. So, trust me when I say he's nothing like you guys. So please, don't lump him together with the likes of you. Don't turn your back on us. We're struggling and we need your help. You're the eldest. It's your responsibility to take care of us. Turn my back on you? That's rich coming from you guys who turn your backs on me first. If you wanted my support now, maybe you should have given it when I needed it. Too little, too late now. And let's not forget how hostile and hateful your tone was until I revealed who my husband is. And then suddenly, it was all sweetness and light. Hypocritical, empathetic, doesn't even begin to cover it. Pathetic? I don't even consider you three as family anymore. You forced me to burn that bridge long ago. Besides, didn't you once say that maid was the perfect description for me? So we're on the same page after all. There's nothing left for us to discuss. Wait! I will say though, I don't want you to suffer for what you put me through. So, I hope you have a terrible time! 
My former family has tried to contact me countless times. But I've since blocked them and finally severed my last tie with them. They tried several times to make contact with me and my husband by coming to her office and making a fuss. But all it took was a call to the police and they reluctantly went home. I would say, I feel sorry for them if it weren't for the years of how they put me through when I needed support the most growing up. It seems the three miscreants are in dire straits financially after shelling out for the violence assault charge. And what's more, Kristen apparently took out a huge loan and went on an extravagant spending spree to try and cope with her stress. It goes without saying that they are in a less enviable position. As for Stephen, out of sheer guilt for being duped in the whole crazy stalker incident, he did try to refuse a job offer at her company at first. He's learned from it, and he considers himself all the wiser for it. We both know it was just a misunderstanding. And as far as we're concerned, it's all water under the bridge now. Stephen is a really hard worker, and we all consider him a priceless asset to the company. I always look forward to the chances I get to go out to eat and spend time with my brother.